Christ. Father God, right now we're going to be opening up in prayer. Um, you can turn to the person next to you. If you have no one next to you, then we're just going to go ahead and pray together as a body of Christ. Hallelujah. Father God, we come before you this morning. We thank you, Jesus, for what you are doing in this season as we prepare this season of Christmas and being reminded of who you are and being reminded of what you've done, so coming down to earth from your home in heaven. Father God, you didn't have to, and yet you still did. And this morning, we come to give you the glory that you deserve. We come to worship you, Lord God. We come to praise you, Lord God. In every circumstance, Father God, that we've been in, Father God, we come to worship you because you, at the end of the day, you will always deserve it, O oh Lord. And so let everything that has breath praise the name of the Lord. Everyone that is breathing and living and has a voice to, to speak and has a voice to sing, Father God, may you receive it this morning. May you receive it in full, O oh Lord. Would you forgive us for our transgressions, forgive us for our sins, forgive us for anything that we've done throughout this week or this month that does not please you, Father God. And would you all allow all to fade away in this moment as we are preparing to worship you this morning. Have your way, Jesus, and make your way in this place. Be king of our hearts again, O oh Lord. We invite you, we magnify your name, O oh God, and all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. As we into this Christmas season, we can be reminded that we can find joy in the Lord. Who's ready to sing of the joy of the Lord this morning? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Sing, I'm trading my sorrow. joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness. I'm trading my, sickness. I'm trading my pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. He said, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. 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 Yes, Lord, amen. joy of the 
feels like fire can't keep it in i'll keep praising in the midnight joy of the lord is my strength sing it out i've got joy on the inside feels like fire can't keep it in i'll keep praising in the midnight the joy of And so many times in life we can experience trials and tribulations. Our hearts may become heavy. And if you're coming in here with a heavy heart this morning, be reminded of the scripture that he will turn your mourning into joy. Let's declare of his goodness and sing of how grateful we are for the Lord this morning. Nothing new. How could I explain? 
express my gratitude. I could sing these songs. I could sing these songs as I often do. But every song, every song must end, and you will never do. All my words fall short. All my words fall short. Oh, 
to the Lord. Shout out a hallelujah to the Lord. Hallelujah means praise his name. We are praising our God. And as we transition into prayer, just think about all the things that you can praise God for. We praise him for having this church. We praise him for our lives. We praise him for the songs that we can sing. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts. Hallelujah. And we say hallelujah again. Because when we sing hallelujah, we're giving praise to Yahweh. We're giving praise to the King of King and Lord of Lord. And today, if you feel like you have nothing fit for a king, and none of us do because he's royalty, but he's prepared a table for you. Your name is written there. You could sit with the Most High. And because of Jesus, as we're reading through the book of Acts this week, Paul missionary journey, Peter and Paul, they went through a lot in sharing the gospel. But because they remember the mission in Acts 13, 46, the Lord told him, I have called you to be a light to the nation, a light to the Gentile. So salvation will be declared to the end of the world. And because they obeyed that mission today, you and I received the gospel. Church, it's not over. God has called us to be that light in this season to declare. Today, let's pray and ask him to empower us, to help us to do the job that Paul and many of the apostles started. May we be find faithful in serving him. Join me in prayer. Father God, what a blessing. That moment of praise. I feel like my soul could sit in your presence from morning till night because I know who you are and I know apart from you, I am nothing. And as your church, as your people, as your children, we come before you acknowledging you, yet you deserve the highest praise because you are Yahweh. You are Jehovah. You are God Almighty. You're the Alpha. You're the Omega. You're the one who sustain our lives. You're the giver of all things. You're the one, Father, in this season we can give thanks. You are a provider that we can make time to feast, Lord, because of your goodness. And we praise you this morning. Father, we give you the glory for the work that you're doing right here at Celebration International Church. The work that you're doing in our lives as your children. The work that you're doing through the leadership of the church. The work that you're doing through our pastors. The work that you're leading Pastor Israel to do. The work that you call us to do in this community. Not only our church, but you call every believer to be a beacon of light. Just like you call Paul and the apostles, Lord. Help us to be faithful to that calling for us to be a light to the Gentile. So that your salvation be made to the end of the earth when you return. May you find us faithful. 
Father, may your blessing be upon our faithfulness of our media team, our musicians, our praise team, our ushers, everyone who's serving, our teachers who are in class and will continue to teach. May your anointing be upon them. And Father, prepare our hearts as we hear your word. Help us to set our burdens and everything aside so we can hear dust set the Lord, to hear everything that you have in store for us so we can go and do the same and share the gospel. We bless your name. We thank you. We pray and ask all these things in the mighty name of Jesus, the light of our lives and the light of the world. Amen. Good morning, good morning, CIC. At this time, we're going to be going over our announcements this morning. So we have a few special announcements, but we're gonna go over the regular announcements. Um, as you guys know, 10.30 every Sunday we have breakfast. At 11 o'clock we begin our English service. Then at, I believe at 12 o'clock or 12.30. The 12.30, thank you, Sister Claude. 12.30 we begin our Creole service. And also at 9 a.m. in the morning we have our Spanish services as well. And then in the midweek, on Wednesdays, we have our midweek Bible studies. And this week, we are actually going to having um, a Bible study on biblical principles and maintaining your finances. And we have these Bible studies every, Sun, every Wednesday at 7 p.m. right here at our church. And we also have a special announcement for our Christmas concert. It will be happening on December 24th. Yay, yes, we're officially entering the best holiday of the season, woo woo. Uh, and if you try to argue, I'm sorry, you're gonna lose. Um, but yes, December 24th, we'll be having our Christmas concert. And also we have a special announcement um, True Worship Official will be having their Christmas special live recording on YouTube. Uh, it will be happening on December 2nd at 11 a.m. It's just going to be a nice Christmas special that they'll be, that they'll be putting on. Yes, amen. If we can have the, the presentation up, please, that would be great. Yes. Our theme this year is put some respect on his name, put some respect on Jesus' name, where we just truly restore the message of honoring Jesus. And it's going to be a great time of worship and praise, and we really hope that each and every one of you could be able to join online. And I believe that is all for announcements. Now we're going to be having Pastor Abner come and share the scripture with us, offering scripture. Let's prepare our heart for offering this morning. We're going to read in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. We're going to choose our master this morning. It says, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. Therefore, you cannot serve both God and money. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for this verse. You ask us to choose our masters. And we're going to choose you because we realize that it won't be too long. Money will not do anything for us. 
but your grace will last forever and ever. I pray you in the name of Jesus. We say amen. Amen, amen. God is good, and all the time, I'll say it like you believe it now, we're excited to have this time of worship. Thank you to our musicians, praise and worship, our media team. We did have some technical stuff for our online folks today, uh, our internet, dealing with Comcast. And uh, I don't know, Richie was on, on the line with them, so we're trying to see if we could uh, uh, get them back on. So they owe us money, so don't worry about it. We're going to get them. We, um, but we're excited that you're here. And uh, if you're here and you are a guest, uh, let me say that we are thrilled to have you as a guest. We don't consider you a visitor. A visitor just come back and sneak in and maybe sometimes and... But as a guest, we prepared for you. We prayed for you that God would bring people here at CIC. This is our English uh, service. Right after that, we have our Creole service. But we want to just say thank you for taking the time to come. You could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here. So may the Lord use this moment to bless you, to encourage you, and next time, I want to encourage you, bring a friend with you, because uh, this is what CIC is all about. We're about growing and encouragement, especially, I want you to do this. Do me a favor, invite them to, for breakfast. See, it's hard to turn down a breakfast, okay? And so invite them to breakfast, and then they're going to see how much uh, preparation has been done for for them and for you too. And then if you haven't had a chance to go back there yet, after the service, see me because I want to give you a special tour. It's called a breakfast tour, okay, special tour, just for you if you haven't been, if you are a guest. But uh, thank you. If you are a guest, we do have some cards. Usually we fill out, our ushers pass out the cards. If you're here for the first or second time, just give us a wave, you know, let's put your hands up so we'll know, and then to get you a card, and you give, get us, give a, a souvenir, okay? And we, in that souvenir, you, we have a special little gift for you. First and second time, we have special gifts. So 
Uh, we're excited about uh, the opportunity to be a blessing to you. Today, we're going to talk about uh, an exciting topic, but I think it can be a hard or difficult one as well. How many of you, you would say that you are loyal to somebody? Just raise your hand. There's somebody you know you're loyal to. Let me see. Okay, some hands. Some of you say it's loyal. What is that? I'm going to talk a little bit about the definition of loyalty. Maybe after I give you the definition of loyalty, you, you probably will say, okay, yeah, I think, I think I can relate to that. The definition of loyalty is a strong feeling of support or allegiance. See, people sometimes can be loyal to things, to activities, to events, to country. How many of you are loyal to your country? It says, oh, maybe not me. They're going to call me to go to war or something. Uh, but no, I think I've seen people have passionately that, that strong feeling of support and allegiance to a person, like I said, or to a particular thing. And couples, people that are married to each other, family members, you loyal to different family members. All in law, I just want you to understand that loyalty is one of the greatest traits or attributes one can have. And, and I truly believe there are people who serve in the military. How many of you plan to go or serving right now in the military? Anybody? Okay. I, I don't see too many hands here, okay? But look, maybe somebody's going to be gone in the in future and they have mixed feelings. But I, I truly believe there are people who serve in the military and they're not loyal. Just because you serve in the military, it's a great noble thing to do, but they're not necessarily loyal. Because loyalty goes deeper than that. It's that, that feeling of support at every time and any time. And I have an awesome example in the Bible for you today so you could see exactly what I'm talking about. And then at the end of our service, what I'm going to give you a chance, I'm going to give you an opportunity to check your own loyalty to Jesus. I'm excited about this season. If you look back there behind me, you see that uh, this is what we believe, this nice, beautiful banner. And, and it says what? Joy to the world. That's a season of joy. At the same time, I do know, even during this season of joy, there can be moments of sadness. I just know how hard it is for this mother that I minister to this week to be able to, to have the joy that we're talking about when she just lost her 14-year-old to an accident, who was a, who was a, a football player at Coconut Creek High School. And uh, it's, that's crazy. It's, it's hard. But I just want you to know some way, somehow, if you know Christ as your personal Savior, I'm not saying trouble is not going to happen to your life, but I'm saying when you go through the turbulence of time, trouble, and craziness, whichever area it is in your life, I want you to understand you could count on Jesus. There was some way, somehow, he works with you through those messes of life. And so today, in that story, you're going to see that. You're going to see this pop right out, okay? How many of you like pop-ups? You know, I hate pop-ups. But this is the right kind of pop-up. It's going to pop up in your life, in, in, your, in, in, in your understanding when we read the passage. 
Loyalty is one of the greatest traits or attribute one can have. I'm going to see with you, I'm going to help you see very quickly three hallmarks of loyalty. But first, let's read this passage coming out of John chapter 20. When we had the, uh, our time of, of reading, keep in mind, guys, we're getting ready to go to the 47, 47 week, no, 48 week in reading through the Bible. That's what we've been doing here at CIC. Starting in January until this week, 47 week, we've been reading through the Bible. Okay, I understand. Some of y'all didn't make it that far. I know some of y'all stalled a little bit. But guess what? It's not too late. Continue to read with us because we're going to go all the way to the end. And when we get to the end, here's what we're going to say. We're going to say, touchdown, you know? And uh, I hope that, that, that you're excited about that, that possibility and challenge that we give you here at CIC. And, and by the way, one of the reasons we do that did you know that the Word of God is the only thing? It's not a person. It's not an event. But the Word of God is the only element that God has left you to help change your life Amen. or to help build your life. Because some of you need building because things happen, circumstances happen in your life where you need building and rebuilding in some cases. So I'm excited as I was reading that's when the Lord revealed this message to me. And it, this thing is deep, very deep. You see, the word of God is always deep. Uh, look at your neighbor say, the word of God is deep. And that's why sometimes you could get drawn in it. Uh, but we studied together so we could have challenge each other and, and really come to an understanding what God's word is. And so John chapter 20. We're going to start in verse uh, chapter 1, uh, uh, chapter 20, verse 1. I'm not going to ask you to stand up for the whole thing, but I'm going to go through the, the entire passage. And so what I'm going to encourage you to do is, is, is stand with me, and then you go so you get, get the gist of the passage. And then I'm, we're going to read... Uh, a few verses. We're going we're gonna to keep your Bible open from 1 to 18, but we're just going to read um, a couple of verses. Starting in verse 14, I mean 11. Now Mary stood outside the tomb crying as she wept. She bent over to look into the tomb and saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been, one in the head and another one at the foot. And they asked, woman, why are you crying? And here's what she said. They have taken my Lord away, she said, and I don't even know where they have put him. May the Lord bless this portion of scripture. You may be seated. Let us pray. God, we thank you so much for your word. Your word is yes and amen. And I thank you, God, this morning that uh, you will open our hearts and understanding. Help us to see Jesus. And as I, Father, bring the word, I pray that I may decrease so that Christ may increase. Let all of us see Jesus and him alone. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. And so by the end of this service, you, you will get a chance to check the level of your own loyalty. Like I say, husband loyal to wife and wife to husband. And sometimes it doesn't happen. And as soon as that doesn't happen, it takes the relationship south. And when I say south, it means in a negative way. But some people say north, so don't, don't go by that, okay? But south, okay? South means bad. Loyalty is a very important attribute to have. It's, I think it's important in life, period. 
in the passage that we read, the context of this passage is Jesus got crucified. And listen, and every single person, all of the disciples who walked with Jesus, who saw the miracles that Jesus made, a little girl, Jesus, as he was walking on the way, Jairus, a parent came desperately, say, please do something about my daughter. And then Jesus, I mean, people laughed at Jesus. They say, oh, man, listen to him. He says that that little girl is not dead. And then they've been crying, you know. Uh, Pastor Al talked to us about that last week. They had professional mourners in the house, people crying already. And then, all of a sudden, Jesus say, no, she's not dead. See, only, there are some things in your life only Jesus can speak to it. Everybody will see you as hopeless. Everybody will see things as going wayward or messed up. But I want you to know, when it's Jesus looking at you, your situation, he will see it different. That's why it's important for you to really turn your life over to Jesus. But here is what my, I want to contend with you is I think it's worth it for us to be loyal to Jesus. Someone who will meet us at the point of our greatest needs every time. I think it's important to be loyal to that person. But the context is Jesus, the, the disciples, they saw Jesus doing all of these miracles, raise up that little girl and, and so on and so forth. And eventually, Lazarus, who was dead for, what, four days, he raised him up. And then, when it was time for the disciples to stay loyal to their commitment to Jesus, and I remember in a story, when Peter started following Jesus, and he started following Jesus far away, like, I'm checking it out, just like some people are doing. I mean, sometimes people may be even in church, but they're just checking out Jesus. You know, they're looking to see, what's up with that? You know, what's going on? What are they going to do to Jesus? That's what Peter was, was look, looking at. And then they gave him an opportunity to draw as close to Jesus as possible. And then that's a test of loyalty. And, and just like it is a test of loyalty for each of us. Sometimes God is going to give you an opportunity to draw closer to Jesus. What are you going to do? Here's what Peter did. There was a little girl who looked at Peter and says, this man that's standing back there, he used to be with Jesus. What would a loyal person do? He would take a stand. He would say, yeah, and so? The minute that they started pointing finger at Peter, this is what he says. Who? I, I, I don't know him. No, you got the wrong person. This is the same man who saw Jesus raise that little girl from the dead. And so today I want you to know it's important for you to check your loyalty to Jesus. Not just come in the crowd and, and trying to blend in and, and so on and so forth. I think there's going to be the time that God, there was a little girl, there was something, there was a circumstance that's going to point finger at you to see where you really stand for Jesus and with Jesus. Let me say this to you. Following Jesus at distance would keep you way more further away from Jesus than you think. Because there will be so many things in between. And that's exactly what Peter started doing. While he followed Christ at distance, we said, so, Pastor, is that the story? Yeah, that's some vivid illustrations of what, where I'm getting to with you as far as the test of loyalty. Peter 
Peter got so far away from God at that time that he had nothing to, to, to wash, no water, no clean water could ever wash him. He got so dirty. I mean, he got down, right down dirty that I have no clue who he is. Because why? The second time around, they came again to Peter and says, yeah, she's right. We did see you with Jesus. And he started swearing and, and you know, some of y'all know how to swear. I don't know how to do that anymore. I used to do that, okay, way back, okay? But now I forgot all the swearing words. But some of you know how to do it. But Peter used some choice of word that I don't want to say right now. He says, I didn't, what? I don't know him. How long is it going to take us sometimes for us to see that? God will put you through that kind of test. So that you will know how close you really are to God. For some of you, you're a student on a campus. You go to school, you're a student. You may be in college, high school, middle school, elementary. God is going to test your loyalty in every segment of the time. And, and, and sometimes if anybody would, if somebody start talking about Christianity, you're dark. Because you don't want to have none to say. Or you don't want somebody to, you know, you want undercover kind of, just like Peter. You wanted to be undercover. He couldn't be. But here's what true loyalty to your Savior and your Lord or to somebody. That's what it, that's what it means. The hallmarks of loyalty. You're going to see Dedication, that's the first one. Second, you're going to see sacrifice. That's the second one. People that are loyal, you know. Then you're going to see perseverance. perseverance. And that perseverance, you're going to see two steps of that perseverance, okay? We, let's go quickly. The story goes like this. After Jesus now was raised from the dead, there was still somebody looking for him where he said that he wouldn't be. To me, that can be a problem. But in this case, let's walk, let's be sensitive to Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene is the same lady that Jesus chased seven demons out of her. I just want you to understand the magnificence of somebody following Christ. When you follow Christ, I know sometimes people say, well, there is no benefit in following Christ. You better believe there was benefit for somebody to have seven demons and Jesus was able to come and cast all of them. And do you know today we're living in a world of demonic oppression? Demonic can take over from a, a child all the way to an adult. And sometimes when we leave room in our lives, you're dabbling with stuff on the internet and all over the place. You open the door right off, open for demonic forces to come into and do what they do. That's why we have so many people in the church, even in the church, that are addicted to some form of something. And, and by the way, I know whenever we talk about addiction, you think about just pornography. Now, sometimes it's other stuff. That cell phone that you have in your hands, in your power, everywhere, you can be addicted to it. And, and so many other stuff. And you say, well, pastor, what does demon has to do with that? It's just somebody is addicted. Yes. Because it causes you to act in, and behave. You, you hold on to a different idol. And it's not God. When your cell phone, when porn, when deviation, when stuff can replace God, it's demonic forces that's around that. You need to recognize that. And so this lady was grateful for seven demons that was uh, chased out of. And, and by the way, I, I just, I, I know we're going to have teachings on, on this 
we'll get more in depth. I can't, I cannot, but I'm just letting you know. Here's that same lady who was so messed up, demonized, and then now she's the only one at the tomb looking for Jesus. You gonna tell me that's not transformation? And you think when you come to church, you're wasting your time? Think again. It could be your opportunity for God to really get rid of some kind of forces that are about to destroy you. And sometimes, by the way, some of these forces that can be within us, they're dormant. Just one little thing can trigger and then boom. And so here she came looking for Jesus. Why did you come here this morning? Did you have that in your mind that I'm going to come and look to be closer to Christ today? I want to be closer to Jesus. Or is it just another routine there? Oh, man, we got to come to church, man. You don't know what I could have been doing on my phone. You don't know what I could have been doing on TV. I'm going to miss my favorite show. But it's important to know that you need to come to look for Christ, especially in church. You know how many distractions, how somebody can be sitting here, they're still checking their text. They're still, they act like they're reading the Bible, you know, but if you look over their shoulder, and I give you permission to do that, look over and watch. It's something else. They ain't looking for no Jesus. But if he came and looked what? For who? For Jesus. And so when she went to see Jesus, guess what she saw? She saw an empty tomb. What a slap in the face for, uh, for Mary. An empty tomb. And look, listen. Here's what, here's what I see in this passage. Mary was coming to look for a dead man. But God had something else in mind. Just like he may have something else in mind for you. Christianity is not a dead religion with a ser people serving a dead religion led by a dead man. And by the way, they mess up Christianity so bad now, you have groups that call it well, religion for the white man, religion this. You see all this demonic influence that Christ, uh, you know, Satan can put in people so that they keep them away, what? From Jesus. That has nothing to do with that. Jesus came for the individual, for the person. And we put all these color schemes and stuff all over it. That's why a lot of people are still missing Jesus, okay? But she came to look for a dead Jesus. When you come and look for a dead Jesus, what do you think you're going to find? A dead Jesus. But Jesus was no longer there. But here's what Mary did. She ran back to the disciples and said, You can't believe I went to the tomb. They stole Jesus. He's no longer there. Somebody took away the body. See, but but you see, if Mary remembered something, she would remember there were some other things also that could have happened to Jesus. Why do we always go to the negative? Why? But she went, that's where she went. Listen to what it says here. And, and so verse 2 says. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciples. Where were the other disciples? They were hiding, you know. <laughs> and who was at the tomb? Mary, you know. Why didn't the disciples go with Mary? I, I don't know. Because if they went, they could have exposed their lives because they just killed this man who was notorious. I mean, and, and guess what? They're not going to be afraid to kill those disciples if they needed to. And so here it is. I'm going to kind of narrow these things down, man. It's getting deep, but, man, I'm going to have to leave, all right? Listen, here, here it is. And then it says, they have taken the Lord out of the tomb, 
and we don't know where they have put him. Just because you don't know something don't mean that it ain't something. There are a lot of things you don't know that can surprise you. There are a lot of things you don't know about Jesus that could really be the, 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 the nail on that coffin that needs to bury your, all your negativity, all your hurts, all your stuff that Jesus can help revive you. Jesus can make somebody new out of you, somebody different out of you. So just because you don't know, it ain't mean that it's, there wasn't something better than what you don't know. And so Mary didn't know, and then she went and spread that, that, that things over the, the disciples. And so guess what they did? It was then when they heard that, oh, man, this thing is serious. They took Jesus' body. And then here's what the Bible says. It says that they started racing toward the tomb. But guess what motivated that racing? The thoughts. Man, they stole Jesus. They stole Jesus. Therefore, what? Man, we, what are we going to do, you know? And, and so here's what the Bible says. It says that as they were racing, so Peter and the other disciples started for the tomb. Both were running. <laughs> Can you imagine that scene? Yeah, they both were running. They're running toward a dead man. So somebody was supposed to not be there, right? They're running toward the tomb. And then the Bible says that the other guy, I couldn't believe it. The other guy outraced Peter. He got in front of Peter and ran. I, I, I'm telling you, that, that wasn't no... No, uh, what do you call that? No fast walking? This thing, a hundred dash these guys took to the tomb. And then when they got there, the first guy that got there, <gasps> and he didn't want to go in. He was, the tomb was open. He didn't want to go in. And so his Peter came right after him, right? Came Peter came right after. When Peter came, finally, you know how Peter, he always wants all the glory for himself. And, and he saw the guy was sitting there. He went to the tomb so he could say he got there first. So he went inside the tomb. And then the other guy, all of a sudden, probably was scared, you know, and didn't know what to think. And here it is. They're in there. And then they thought about what Jesus was saying. This is what the Bible says. I'm going to go with what the Word of God says. They thought about what Jesus was saying to them while he was alive. What did Jesus say to them while he was alive? That I was going to be what? Killed. Killed and what? Buried. Buried. And then what? And raised again. And be resurrected the third day and be alive again. Everybody say alive. alive. It was time for them to begin to celebrate the Christ that was alive. But there was still that doom in Mary's life that needed to change. And you know, that's why I'm, I'm going to close that. But I want you to see. Here is, here is what, it, what really happened. Just like I was telling you, I was going to help you see the test of loyalty. The hallmarks of true loyalty was, was the dedication. You saw that sense of dedication with, to Mary. Let me show you what happened there. After the disciples saw that, they said, well, Jesus said he was going to be raised again. Maybe, you know, and so they started thinking. They started processing this. The scripture began to make sense. Just like it needs to begin to make sense to some of your lives. Because sometimes the Bible is just a book that's written. People are forcing it on people to read. But no, it needs, it needs to begin to make sense. And then, look. And then as the disciples saw that and they left. The disciples, they came to the tomb. They left. Guess who they left behind? Mary. 
Mary still didn't get her answer. You know, that's one of the greatest, I, I think, tests of loyalty. When everybody else left, when everybody else is all over the place, where are you? Guess what? Mary was still there looking for Jesus. She just couldn't accept. The guy's answer, the guy coming says, oh, little Mary, she's, she's, you know, she's, you know, she's just emotional. They thought that's what it was. But I really think that's a level of dedication because of her loyalty to Jesus. Her loyalty to her Lord caused her to come, even if it was for a dead person in her mind, right? She was going to stick with that dead person, even when everybody else left. Can I say this to you today? There are some people that are willing to stick out, to dedicate to a way more to a dead person, dead activities, dead, then Jesus today who's alive. He's alive, y'all. You're not serving. You're not coming to a tomb of a dead Jesus. You're coming to a raising Savior. If Mary was able to do that for a dead person, how much more those of you who are living need to be fully loyal and committed to Jesus? And so, Mary, you could see that dedication. That's the first hallmark. The second hallmark, the sacrifice that she did right there. The disciples went and left. Guess where? She was still by herself. Guess what she was still by herself doing? Crying. And says, look at these bozos. Look at them. They just left. I can't believe they left me, they left me alone. And then the last hallmark, I want you to see that. Perseverance. She sacrificed that time all by herself. Looking like a fool, according to maybe others that are watching. And if you're reading this. And then, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there was an all of a sudden experience that all of us need to have sometimes. I know things are rough for you today. I know there may be some things that that are confusing to you. I know there may be some serious burden on your life, whether that might be financial, uh, physical, emotional, psychological. But listen, there is that all of a sudden experience that each and every one of us will have. But let me show you what it was for Mary. While she was now, she went back to the tomb. I'm going to read it to you. And now Mary stood, after the disciples left, right? She's by, by herself. Remember, she went up there to get them. They came back together. They did their things. They took back again. Maybe I, I, I'm even thinking they raced back to the, to the place where they were again. And this time, Peter probably said, you ain't going to beat me. All right? But, but look, and then here's what happened. Mary's still standing there. The test, true test of loyalty. Are you still standing there? Even though, listen, even with tears in her eyes, now Mary stood outside the tomb crying, and as she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb. She's still crying, and as she wept, can you imagine the tears at this time? Because to her, Jesus is still, it's been stolen. I mean, it was bad enough for you to kill him. Now you're going to steal him? She couldn't believe it. But as she stood, there was an all of a sudden experience that took place. And here it is. The Bible says that. All of a sudden, verse 12, she saw two angels in white seated where Jesus' body had been. One at the head, where they put the head of the body, Right? And then one at the feet, the measurement of Jesus. 
That's what the angels just took. And they probably took the exact measurement of Jesus' height. I don't know, five feet maybe. Uh, I don't know how tall and, and so on. They never talk about Jesus' height and stuff. Uh, but, but look, she stood there. I mean, they, the angel stood there. To me, that's a, that's a huge deal. That's not what Mary was expecting. She's expecting to see her body, I mean, her Lord's, uh, her Savior that she's so loyal to. But let's listen to the news. And the two angels, listen. They ask her, woman, why are you crying? Let me tell you something, angel. I'm going to talk for Mary. Did you know what happened to my Lord? And now you have the God to even ask me now, why am I crying? Why, why, why am I crying? I'm going to tell you why am I crying. They stole my Lord's body. But they, Mary didn't even have a chance to go through all that. But I know that's the emotions that, that, that she went through. And look, look here. And then he was, he, here it is. Here's the other, all of a sudden experience, the angels. And then they asked her, woman. She said, they have taken my Lord away with tears, trembling voice, right? Broken heartedness. I don't know where they have put him. And at this time, here's the next all of a sudden experience. Sometimes it's one after another in your life. When you're seeking for the right person and, and in touch with the right, listen, this is what God is going to do for you if you're truly seeking for him. If you're truly loyal for him, this is, you're going to see the things that begin to happen in your own personal life. It didn't happen to Peter. It didn't happen to, to all the other guys that came in race. They had that risk. But it's happening to Mary. That old poor lady who was demonized, right? Probably ostracized. But here it is, facing Jesus. And at this, I'm, I'm getting ready to close because you remember the, the last hallmark that I just shared with you was perseverance. Because of her perseverance now, she could see what she's experiencing. There are a lot of things in your Christian life, in your Christian work. You, you shut things down too quick. Listen, you, th you think that you already got Christianity figured out. You just started. I mean, 100 years is not enough. To, for, for you to do that, okay? But, but look, as I close, I just wanted you to see that when I said all of a sudden experience, you got to see it, the steps. And then all of a sudden, after she said, they have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have put him. And as she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, listen, Jesus standing there. Jesus standing there. Will your walk with God keep you there long enough to eventually see Jesus in your life? Some of you play too much that Jesus game, but you need to have a personal touch of Jesus. And when Mary Magdalene saw Jesus, guess what? The tears has been wiped. Amen. There was a big smile in her face. And there's all of a sudden, listen, the reward of eternity surrounded Mary. And she fell at the feet of Jesus to, win, to embrace Jesus. Say, yes, this is who I've been looking for. He was Jesus. But it was loyalty that took her that far. The hallmark of loyalty, brothers and sisters, is those three things that I want you to live with. What are they? The first hallmark of loyalty was what? Dedication. Okay. And second hallmark of loyalty was what? The sacrifice that sometimes it's going to take. True loyalty will take you there. And then the third one was what? 
perseverance caused her to see major breakthrough. The tears of, 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 of and sometimes maybe you still have tears right today. Maybe there was still a moment of sadness in your life for whatever the reason. But here's what I want to ask you. Is your relationship with Jesus so real that you're willing, confidential, I mean with confidence, to say that I'm willing to trust Jesus all the way through? If you're not able to say that, I'm sorry, but Jesus is worth it. The story we saw here shows that. There are things that may not happen in your life yet, but if you stick, if you persevere, if you stick long enough, he'll take you there. Jesus wants to take you to places that you've never been. You think you've been there, but you've never been. But it's based on true commitment, true loyalty. I want to pray for somebody today who may feel like, you know, maybe they're a distance. They're following Christ, but it's a distance. But I'm going to give you an opportunity to say, yeah, I'm willing to be loyal, to be sold out to Jesus, no matter what the cost, no matter what it takes. We saw the cost last week already. But today is your opportunity to make a stand Says, I'm going to be loyal. Yes, I'm going to be loyal to Jesus. I've been playing that wishy-washy game, wishy-washy Christianity. I see it all over the place, you know. And it's not going to hold you that, that far. That's why maybe on a school campus, it's not there. In a relationship, it's not there. At home, it's not there. But I want you to know when you come to Christ and you're loyal to him, Every single step, every part of your life is saturated with miracles that Christ is going to do in your life. The anger issue that you have, the drinking problem, that the drug problem that you have. You think you have to be smoking and pulling that stuff in order for you to find that feeling. And nothing comparing to Jesus, y'all. So Jesus is saying, it's me. I'm standing here for you. You may not see him presently, physically, but he's here. And he's asking for somebody to make us to take a step and say, yes, I'm that one. I want to be loyal. I've been wishy-washy. Things are not. So won't you come right now? Won't you come? If God is speaking to you, yes, it's you. You come right now. Praise God. Anybody else? You come right now. I'm just going to do that special prayer for you. Amen. Anybody else? You want to? Loyalty cause you to be willing to go miles and miles. Anybody else? Because this is for you. It's not for me. God is speaking to you right now. Don't be like Peter is looking to see who's looking. No, don't, don't. You're taking care of business with God. Don't look around. It's you and God. So as you come, as those coming forward, I'm going to do a special prayer. Prayer of commitment. Prayer of commitment to be loyal. To, to be drawn closer to the Lord. Why don't you stand to your feet? I'm going to give you a last opportunity to come. And it's your call. Why don't you stand? Everybody stand. Just stand. And as you stand, we want to make it easy for you to come forward as we close. Uh, for those of you that God is still speaking with. Anybody else? One last call. Anybody else? Amen. Praise God. This is the one last call. We're going to be praying for you. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, we're giving you that opportunity. I'll get a chance to, to meet with those and, and because we really take this serious when God is speaking and people are making decisions. And, and we want to give you your opportunity. Don't leave this place without talking to somebody if, if, uh, if for whatever the reason you're really not making it here, which I think you should, but 
I'm giving you that opportunity. Speak to somebody, please. Let us close in prayer. God, thank you so much for your word that is so clear. We want to be loyal to Jesus. God, we practice loyalty to, with everything else. Oh, God, the most important person universe, the most important person in the world, Jesus, who came and gave his life to us, for us. God, would you help us to be loyal to him? And for those that may be walking at distance, still checking things out, Father, help them not to waste their time. Help them to see the light. We trust you. Thank you for all those who came forward. Speak, anoint them, bless them, and help them, Father, to make stride, Father, in their spiritual walk. Be gracious unto them. Special hedge of protection around them. As I see young faces in front of me, God, would you protect them? Keep them from evil, because we know the enemy is playing against our young people our young adults and our families, we're taking a stand right now. The same Jesus who rose from the dead. Empower us. Empower each and every one of those that came forward to live out their lives. In Jesus' name, our Savior and our Lord, we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you. We're getting ready to start in our second service. God bless.